What's going on guys? So I'm coming at you with another video today and I'm probably not going to sound the best because I'm actually really sick. So please bear with me on that one. But I wanted to talk about Battlefield 5 because if you didn't know already, Battlefield 5 has been delayed from release. Originally slated for release on October 19th, the game has been pushed back an entire month to November 20th. Now, depending on your status as a Battlefield fan, this can mean one of two things. If you're a Battlefield fan, this is a good thing because obviously this might help the game sell more copies. And it also gives the dev team another month off of the beta alone just to add more changes into the game and to make the game better. However, if you're not a Battlefield fan and you're just kind of following along just for the story, well... You kinda can think of this as that moment in which they collapsed under the pressure. And the reason that I say that is, is because obviously October 19th is a very, very hard time to release a game, especially this year. I mean, every year we have, you know, blockbuster titles coming out around that time of the year, so releasing during that time frame is always going to be hard, especially if you're not like Call of Duty or Red Dead Redemption 2. But considering that both of those titles actually release either a week before or a week after October 19th, EA was basically setting this game up to be the afterthought of everybody because, well, between Call of Duty, Battlefield, and Red Dead Redemption, I think it's safe for us to say that Call of Duty and Red Dead Dead Redemption would definitely have sold more copies in this time frame. Well, in general, they would have sold more copies anyways, it's just going off of the trends, but... Now, I've been thinking a lot about Battlefield 5 over the last week, and though I'm excited to try it during the open beta right now, I would say that I'm probably not going to get this game. Now, don't get that mixed up. I'm not saying that it's for sure yet, I'm just saying that based off of Everything going so far, based on the principle of what has been said, how the game looks in comparison to Battlefield 1, which was a game that I did not like, and the historical inaccuracies, okay? Because I don't have a problem, so much at least, with the historical inaccuracies. I mean, I think it's bullshit, but it's not going to be something that makes me not buy the game entirely. However, I don't want to support that. I don't want to support them financially just to make the decision again in the future. I mean, supporting them doing it now would mean that we would inadvertently support them doing it again in the future, and I don't think that's a precedent I really want to help set. I've always been a little bit iffy about Battlefield 5, however, I was pretty, you know, optimistic, I guess you could say, which I know, funny pun, but I was always optimistic about it. I had planned on getting it up until, you know, a couple days ago. I've been thinking about it a lot more. I just don't think it's something that I want to support. I don't know, honestly, if I'll play the game much after launch in its current state, or at least how it looks so far, but I also don't want to just run out and buy the game because, you know, if you don't like it, don't buy it, and I don't know if I'm gonna like it yet, so probably best that I don't just go out and buy it. Of course, I will make my final decision on whether or not I get the game based on the open beta that is coming on August 6th, I believe is the open beta start. So if the game impresses me then, then I will decide to get it. But there are some problems still with Battlefield 5. I guess we could really ask the question, uh, what what does this do, you know? What what does this hold back, this, this delay do for Battlefield 5? Will it help the game? Will it make it thrive? Will this be enough to pull it up out of the depths of falling behind Black Ops 4 nearly 90% in pre-orders? Will it be enough to shake the negative stigma around the fan base who was, you know sold a realistic World War II shooter and instead got a British platoon with a handicapped female on the front lines of World War II. Battlefield 5 has, you know, it's set up a lot of questions for us, but it's not really answering many other ones for us. You know, it's just, I think that's a huge problem with the game right now is not not even the release date. I mean, of course, yeah, that, that was going to be a big problem and that was definitely going to probably lead to less sales. I mean, we can look at Titanfall 2 and determine that, but it just seems like every time the Battlefield fan base has a question about this game, they just beat around the bush with it. Like we ask, hey, why is there a prosthetic arm on this woman on the front lines of British platoons? Well, my daughter plays Fortnite, and she asked me why in a World War II Battlefield game she couldn't be a girl like in Fortnite, so I couldn't just tell her the history behind the war and I had to change it, you know? And that really is the main problem for Battlefield 5. I wouldn't even say it was that release date of October 19th. I think it would really be the historical inaccuracy and the way that EA and DICE really handled it, because obviously telling us if you don't like it, don't buy it is not a very good business practice, you know? I mean, that, that's already in the consumer's mind. 
if I buy a lawnmower, I don't need for the lawnmower manufacturer to say, if you don't like our lawnmower, don't buy another one. That was already insinuated from the purchase, you know? You, you don't have to tell us that. And by you telling us that, you actually have pushed more people away than ever. But this pushback, we can definitely answer a few questions about it. What does it mean for the game? Well, DICE has said that they will be spending this time working on core mechanics of the gameplay. I'm assuming that also means that we're going to be seeing some changes from the beta, because they didn't change the scheduling for the beta, and I'm assuming if they got an entire extra month added on of time that they could be putting into that, I'm pretty sure some of the fan requests from the beta will make it into that time frame, but hell, who knows, you know? This also means that the game doesn't have to compete with Red Dead Redemption 2 and Call of Duty for pretty much everyone's money in a set of a couple weeks. The only other major game I can think of off the top of my head that it really has to compete with in the month of November, and I might be wrong, but the other real major one, at least that I'm focused on getting right now, is Fallout 76. I think that it could definitely compete with Fallout 76 a lot easier than both Call of Duty and Red Dead Redemption, so pushing the game back another month should mean very good things not only for the core gameplay and requests made by the community, so the gameplay should also get better, but it should also mean good things in terms of sales. That is, if they also find a way to not insult their consumer base again, you know. I know a lot of people are very shaky about this Battlefield. I'm very shaky about this Battlefield, and I've been a fan since 4, actually, so not really that long, but you also have to think it's been 5 years almost since Battlefield 4 came out. 4 is also my favorite. I mean, I've went back and I've revisited a lot of the older Battlefields over time, but 4 is still my favorite of all time. I haven't ever played 3, and I know that that's a lot of people's favorite, so, I mean, maybe that would also be my favorite. I've never played it, so. But EA is really in a huge pickle here, because they have to manage the situation that they're in very carefully. EA has already done more to destroy the game than they have probably ever really done for any Battlefield game. I can't, I can't think of another scenario like this off the top of my head. The way that they have handled this game so far has been one of the m most disastrous processes I've ever seen out of a AAA company when it comes to handling a game. EA's shares also plummeted after this announcement came out, so... I mean, if you had money in EA, I would go check your stock account now because not looking too fresh, but I don't know. I mean, I'm not sold entirely on Battlefield 5 yet. I think that it's going to need a lot of work. I think that it's kind of a disrespectful game when it comes to actually representing history. I think Battlefield 5 fans are, you know, in the right. Hey, if you like the game, the way it looks, you know, more power to you. But I think that other Battlefield fans also have the right to be mad. I mean, we were lied to. This game was supposed to be a realistic World War II shooter, but it's not. And it doesn't even come down to, like, the weapon inaccuracies and things like that. EA has purposely, well, not even EA, DICE has purposely destroyed one of the most prominent pieces of history just because they can't handle the fact that women just did not serve in combat roles on the front lines of World War II for the British infantry. I don't, I don't understand why we can't just accept that history is not always the way we want it to be. And DICE, EA, I have a feeling that maybe if you could just accept that fact and you could just accept that people don't want to be destroyed. You know, we don't want to have history destroyed in front of us. And we certainly don't want to be mocked and shamed for not accepting these changes to history. You know, that doesn't tend to be something people like. We don't like to be called, you know, uneducated because we know for a fact that women did not serve in prominent combat roles like you're trying to put on. Yo, I'm sorry that your daughter can play Fortnite and she can be a girl, but that's not World War II. Women can serve in the military now. Women could not serve in the military legally in World War II. I understand that there were specific factions and things like that that allowed women. Make a DLC. You did the same thing in Battlefield 1. Have you ever noticed that, by the way? Battlefield 1 sold extremely well. It actually led Infinite Warfare in pre-order numbers at this point, when you, of course, compare the timelines. Battlefield 1 also had women in it. You know why people were fine with it? Because you put them in a DLC, and that DLC was, uh, <laughs> true to history. It's almost like if you don't force-feed that narrative and that false agenda to us through your game, the sales probably would already be better. And if you definitely didn't basically spit in our face, your sales would probably be way better than they already would have been. So... You pushing this game back probably is going to help it. I hope it helps it, but you still got a lot of work to do. So, 
I don't know. Why are you watching this video? Go, go fucking work on the game. I mean, I'm glad you watched, but you probably didn't listen to me. You haven't listened to the fucking tens of thousands of hundreds of thousands of people in the Battlefield community who have already spoken out about it, so... Why, why would you why would you listen to me anyways thank you guys for watching if you did enjoy make sure to leave a like on this video subscribe if you're brand new around here follow me on twitter at sub to optimus for memes thoughts and updates and until my next video this is optimus wondering about battlefield 5 and signing out